Good morning. My name is Denise. Thank you for attending my presentation. Today, I will be discussing how valve endothelial cell secretions augment calcification by valve interstitial cells. Heart valves help us maintain proper direction of blood flow. However, valves are subject to diseases such as calcific aortic valve disease, or CAVID, which results in valve stenosis, regurgitation, and reduced cardiac outputs. It is one of the most prevalent chronic heart problems and studies have shown an increase by over 100% in the last 30 years. Current treatment options for early stages of CAVID are not available. Severe treatments include bowel prosthetic or mechanical valve replacements. Bowel prosthetic valves are prone to recalcification and may need multiple operations. And mechanical valves require patients to be on lifelong anticoagulants. Both cases are invasive and therefore are limited to a selective patient subset. Most aortic valves consist of three leaflets. Some people are born with two and maybe a few with four. Each leaflet contains ventricularis, spongiosa, and fibrosa layers. The ventricularis consists of mainly elastin fibers and faces the heart's ventricle. The fibrosa contains mainly collagen and faces the aorta. The spongiosa is sandwiched in the middle and are mainly glycosaminoglycans, or GAGs. Both surfaces are covered with a monolayer of valve endothelial cells with valve interstitial cells inside the layers. As VEX reside on valve surfaces and VIX in the middle layers, VEX are subject to fluid shear stress. Due to the valve structure and direction of blood flow, laminar flow with high shear stress is mainly observed on the ventricularis side, while the fibrosa layer is dominated by low shear stress and oscillatory flow. We know that low shear stresses are commonly associated with lesions and calcification, and that flow oscillations with high calcium concentrations can trigger inflammation on the valve fibrosa layer. We like to further understand the relation between precise flow oscillations and development of CAVID. OSI, or oscillatory shear index, is a measurement of flow disturbance. Its equation quantifies the ratio between forward shear and total shear, where big T is the duration of cycle, tau is the wall shear stress, and small t is time. The OSI value ranges between 0 and 0 0.5. This is a visual representation of OSI and flow. We can see that when OSI is zero, flow remains static or steady. At OSI of 0.25, there is moderate oscillation, and at 0.5, flow is at full oscillation. The objective of this study is to correlate OSI with progression of CAVID. We hypothesize that a combination of high OSIs with procalcific environment promotes aortic valve calcification. To test our hypothesis, we evaluated pericrine signaling events or communication between cell types, specifically from VEX to VIX that lead to calcification. The VEX were subject to low, moderate, and high OSIs. We want to identify the impact of different OSIs on VEX and how they relay messages to VIX that may or may not lead to calcification. First, we cultured VEX. Commercially available human VEX were purchased and expanded with the recommended growth medium in coated T75 flasks. The VEX were then conditioned in a bioflux shear assay system using a 24 well plate that consisted of eight microfluidic channels. A shear magnitude of one dime per centimeter squared was applied to the endothelial cells for all flow groups, static, steady, 0.25 OSI, and 0.5 OSI. And each group was subject to 48 hours of flow conditioning. Upon termination of bioflux with VEX, we collected the VEC conditioned media, which I will now call this the original group. We placed a portion of this media in an ultra centrifuge to obtain a pellet of exosomes, which were then isolated by removing the supernatant. The exosome pellet was resuspended in fresh procalcific media, and the procalcific ingredients were also added to the original group, as well as the non exosomal supernatant group. The procalcific ingredients consisted of 5% FBS and 1% PEN strip. 
1.8 millimolar of calcium chloride, 3.8 millimolar sodium dihydrogen phosphate, and 0.4 units of inorganic pyrophosphate. These ingredients were introduced to induce VIC calcification. So now we have three groups, the original, exosome pellet, and cytokine supernamed, which are now labeled as ORG, EX, and CY for short. Next, we purchased commercially available human VICs and expanded them in flasks. To simulate paracrine signaling, we used the conditioned media from VEX in all flow groups to further culture VICs. The VICs were conditioned in static for seven days in the three groups of procalcific VEC media that were collected earlier. We then used alizarin red to quantify the level of calcification in each sample and the samples were normalized to the amount of protein secreted in the individual wells. Our first study with the original pro-calcific VEC conditioned media, we see a decreased calcification in the 0.25 OSI group. On the left side, we have a fresh PC positive control. In this particular group, the VICs were conditioned in fresh pro-calcific media with no exposure to any VEC communication. The negative controls on the bottom are VICs conditioned with VEC media with no procalcific ingredients. While the flow groups are not statistically significant to each other, there is a statistical significance between the fresh PC control and the 0.25 OSI group. In our second study with the exosomal pellet, we see a general decrease of VIC calcification in the presence of VEC media. However, there is no statistical significance across the groups even when compared to the fresh PC group. The next study with the procalcific cytokine supernamed, we see a significantly lower calcification in all groups compared to the fresh PC control, with the exception of 0.5 OSI group. Also, if we compare the 0.5 OSI group to other non-static flow groups, we see a significantly higher calcification level. This is a summary graph of all groups combined. I'd like to point out that in the non-exosomal cytokine group, we see a significantly decreased calcification compared to the positive control, except for the 0.5 OSI. This probably suggests that high oscillation accompanied by high calcific environment may be responsible for VIG calcification via non-exosomal cytokine pathway. In the interest of cytokine communication, we are assessing possible calcific pathways triggered by flow environments. The list here are some of the cardiovascular inflammatory cytokines. We can use them to target biomarkers that develop valve diseases and hopefully synthesize something that intervenes with disease progression. In addition, we will be continuing to study the correlation between OSI and progression of CAVID in a bioreactor. A bioreactor is a device that provides the proper environment for the creation of certain biological products. Our preliminary cytokine panel results on the human VEC-VIC conditioned media show high expressions in the IL-6 and IL-8 cytokines. However, the test panel is limited by a number of cytokines and further methods such as mass spec protein analysis may be considered. I'd like to thank the Department of Biomedical Engineering at Florida International University, Dr. Hutchison and Dr. Ramaswamy in support of this research. And thank you, Taipei, for hosting WCB. Thank you all for your attention.